Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our ISTQB AI tester certification. We completed just two chapters and now it's time for us to step into chapter three, which will be talking about ML and stands for machine learning, of course. And in this chapter, you'll be having several concepts on the outline uh, of the machine learning where we'll be talking about first the forms of machine learning, what's the workflow for the machine learning, selecting a form of ML, factors involved in ML algorithm selection and overfitting and underfitting of an ML. So put together, there'll be some quick outside of what exactly machine learning is all about on a very high level. And then we'll be talking about deeper dive on the same in the upcoming chapters too. So in this particular chapter, uh, we'll be talking basic outline of what is machine learning. And as a part of this particular tutorial, we'll be getting started with 3.1, which is forms of machine learning. All right, so as a part of the forms of machine learning, we have three forms of <coughs> machine learning uh, algorithms, which can be categorized as supervised, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. Let's understand in a deeper dive what exactly the, these three categories are and how we can categorize these machine learning algorithms into these categories. The very first form of machine learning is supervised learning. Now supervised learning is basically a kind of approach or a learning methodology where the algorithms creates the machine learning model and we refer to them as ML model hereafter from label data during the training phase. Now label data is all about like you're giving an outline and giving a name to the pro training set of data to the machine learn the machine learning model and letting them know hey this is what you call it as a dog this is what you call it as a cat this is what you differentiate between a dog and cat is right so you give them a kind of label that hey if i show you any picture related to um, a dog put that into this category and if i show you anything related to a cat then put that into this category so any picture any kind of data set what you use to train the model you will be having a label associated with that and feeding the training of the model will be done with a set of label data. So that's what the label data, which typically comprises of pairs of input, if it includes an image of a dog and the label as well as dog, which is used by the algorithm to in infer the relationship between the input data, which is like images of all the dogs and the output labels dog and the cat during the training. Now this is a very straightforward example to relate back to our uh, Google verifications when you say that, you know, I'm not a robot and then you have a picture, set of pictures in the tiles coming up and the nine tiles may have a quick question on the top, hey, select which one are bridges. Now that's what we're talking about because they may just kind of like ask you which of these pictures contain a signal, which of these contain a zebra crossing, which of these contain a meter taxi or contains a bicycle, because these are all label set of data. So the uh, ML behind that is all about supervised learning. That means the model working behind this particular robotic check of the human beings, uh, when you have to do a two-factor authentication, that is being used with a supervised learning of methodology to train the model. So they have a category that what are bridges, what are zebra crossing, what is a taxi, what is a bicycle, and so on, like an object, right? They don't tell you which scenery is good. So in that case, we have some set of pictures and we do have a data label associated with that. And that's what we use as a source of training data, data set to train the model and accordingly the algorithms behave. Now during the ML model testing phase in such cases, a new set of unseen data is applied to the trained model to predict the output. So once you're done with the training with this particular data set, you will take a fresh set of data. That means new unseen pictures uh, to be shown to the ML model or like kind of feed it in as an input and see if the model is trying to predict the right output or not. The model is deployed once the output accuracy level is satisfactory. That means pretty much precise, like 99% precise to make the decision. You can go ahead and deploy such models. Now, problems solved by supervised learning are divided into two categories. <clears throat> Number one is classification, 
This is when the problem requires an input to be classified into one of a few predefined classes where classification is certainly used. So face recognition or object uh, detection in an image are example of problems that use classification. So problems here are more of like the input what we are referring to. We are not literally solving a problem by calling it out as a learning methodology. We're talking about the problems are basically inputs to the machine learning or the uh, AI based system. So these models classify these inputs into the specific categories. So when you talk about the face recognition, it identifies your face in one category and uh, it put all other faces into different category. So in that case, what happens if you are someone who's trying to unlock your phone, it detects you because all your images, all your screenshots of your face from different angle has been stored in one category. So no matter how you look on it, probably wearing a spectacles as well, it detects you and says, hey, unlocking the phone. But if someone else, not you, who's trying to unlock the phone, it would certainly deny access. Whereas the second thing which we get resolved with is uh, regression. This is when the problem requires the ML model to predict a numeric output using regression. Predicting the age of a person based on input data about their habits or predicting the future prices of stock are examples of problems that use regression. So I think this is, again, very straightforward. Regression is more of like considering certain parameters as input rather than the picture. And then based on that, you come out with a conclusion that, okay, this is what you're talking about. So moreover, like I'm giving you the attributes of the object and based on the attributes collection, I go back to my kind of like data set, what I've been trained with, and I try to pick up the right decisions for that. So the examples given here is um, if I feed you with the, you know, the attributes of a human being, like, hey, he has white hairs, and he's like looking kind of like little old, or he has habits like he can't walk and sort of thing, then he can predict the age like, oh, okay, this guy must be 65 plus, right? And similarly, if you talk about the forecasting based on the previous data, so forecasting is the wonderful example to understand what is regression here. So if I have been following a pattern that how exactly you're doing your work for the last 10 to 20 sprints, then it can forecast that the remaining 10 sprints are remaining amount of work would be done in so many weeks of time. Because in past, this is how you have done your work. So these are a few of the things as an example, which we uh, kind of deal with when it comes to supervised learning, where the data set matters, which has a label and the set of pictures. The second example of the uh, ML learning is unsupervised learning. And there's a slight difference between supervised and unsupervised. Here we do use the data, but here we don't use the label. So this kind of learning, the algorithm creates the ML model from unlabeled data during the training phase. The unlabeled data is used by algorithm to infer the pattern in the input data during the training and assign inputs to different classes based on their commonalities. Now, a very wonderful example to relate to this unsupervised learning is, I have never fed in to the phone that who looks how. Right, But for your face recognition or face unlock feature, they asked you, hey, show me your face from different angles so that I can read it and store it that you are the person who, whose face I should use to unlock the phone. But when you take screenshots, when you take pictures of different people, the phone tries to accumulate those people's pictures together and give you an icon stating that, hey, if you're talking about this person, I have 20 images of this person in your phone. If you're talking about another person, you have two images of or 30 images of this person. So it's, it's trying to do without a label. You have never told me who this person is or what's the name of it or put the pictures related to this in a category. You never told the phone. The phone is trying to auto detect things based on commonalities and trying to group them together in a single segment or in category. So yes, in your gallery, when you see people's photos put together in, in a common place, that's what we are talking about unsupervised learning because we never told them and the AI system is able to detect the face and put them together at one place. So the model, uh, once trained during the testing phase, when it comes to testing, of course the trained model is applied with uh, to a new set of unseen data to predict what classes uh, the input data should be assigned to. 
right? So for example, if you want to test this, uh, you may just go and take a new picture of that person and you go back to your gallery and check that under the same face, does he add that picture or not? And yes, you may observe that a lot of pictures are misaligned sometimes because probably the picture was unclear or maybe the angle was matching with someone else. So very interesting, which is happening in your day-to-day -day work. Also, the model is deployed once the output accuracy level is considered to be satisfactory, which is always there. And then comes the problems, which are solved by unsupervised learning, are divided into two categories again. Number one, clustering. Of course, you want to group things together. Then you can do this, like easy grouping of objects together. So this is when the problem requires the identification of similarities in input data points that allow them to be grouped based on common characteristics or attributes. For example, clustering is used to categorize different types of customers for the purpose of marketing. So that's another example than what I gave you. The second one is association. <clears throat> and this is when uh, the problem requires interesting relationships or dependencies to be identified among data attributes. For example, a product recommendation system may identify association based on the customer shopping behavior. Now, I think uh, this is another very common example which you could very well uh, determine and understand that when you go on a shopping cart or e-commerce website, and uh, no matter what kind of product you're shopping, you always see a recommendation right below that because they, and also they specify clearly on top of it, people who bought this product, they also have bought this one. Would you like to go with that? Or when you buy probably, for example, a mobile, you would always see a recommendation for the screen guard, or you might see a recommendation for the back panel for that phone. Why? Because there is a model behind the screen which is trying to adapt your behavior and commonality and see that, yeah, this phone doesn't go without a back panel. So of course you will need to buy this and this is very common among people who are buying this product. And then they will suggest to you, they will give you the output that, yeah, would you like to go with the screen guard and the back panel too? If yes, please go ahead. So you feel happy that the system is so precise, you know, they're trying to recommend us some good products and you sometimes buy that. Point is, no, they don't want to <clears throat> give you the recommendation, rather they want to increase the sale. But yeah, we are talking about the model being trained in a way that they can talk about the commonalities and then based on that, they can come and give you recommendations. Well, coming to the third one, of course, this is called as reinforcement learning, which is another form of ML, where reinforcement learning is an approach where the system, well, called as an intelligent agent, learns by interacting with the environment in an iterative manner and thereby learns from experience. Now, reinforcement learning does not use training data at all. That means they use the live data how exactly things are happening and how it is going to work and accordingly they behave. Now the agent is rewarded when it makes a correct decision and penalized when it makes an incorrect decision. For example, setting up the environment, closing the right strategy for the agent to meet the desired goal. The designing a reward function are key challenges when implementing reinforcement learning. Following that, robotics, autom autonomous vehicles, and chatbots are the examples of application that use reinforcement learning. So again, if you talk about the robotics, uh, autonomous vehicles, that means they are capable of dynamic situations. They don't have any kind of predefined training data set. Rather, they just have sensors which detects a particular type of motion and accordingly make decisions on that. And now there's no data. For example, if you're talking about a car like Tesla, right, which is a complete autonomous car, which drives you from one position, one particular location to another location, it, it clearly says that there's no predefined data for such ML models. It's just that they have been told about what is the strips on this road and what exactly is the map directions and what is the control on the speed, et cetera. That, that is what is the pre-feeded thing. But there's no training data that what does a kind of like, you know, vehicle looks like. And what should you do in that case? If you have a car in front of it, should you apply brakes immediately? If you have a truck in front of you, you shouldn't be applying brake immediately. 
or there's a human being right in front of you, what should you do? So there's no predefined data. It's just that a sensor says that if you have any obstruction in next 20 meters or 30 meters, depending on the speed, you apply the brake accordingly, right? And that obstruction can be anything anything it could be a human being it could be a car it could be a truck it could be a plane point is we don't have any predefined data which we have used to train we didn't train with the data rather it is reinforcement learning which says that whatever comes you need to take that action so robotic arms or robotics whatever you use it for the autonomous vehicles the chatbots they always respond to dynamic inputs they don't have any predefined data like set of questions to be answered it, it, the chatbots come up with your queries and appropriately try to understand and respond to that. So in that context, this is completely different from the supervised and unsupervised learning. So I hope you got a good understanding of what exactly uh, the forms of ML are and how exactly this is being applied to your real-time standards. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.